afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast Lab with me, your host, Imperial Dane, here with a few tips and tricks for maximizing your Ostholm openings, or sort of getting the most out of them. And as a rule of thumb, Jenny wants to consider do you want an infantry company or not? That usually depends, does my opponent have the opportunity of pushing a lot vehicle, which could otherwise ruin my day if I don't have Panther Faust. If the answer is yes, yes, you want it. If the answer is no, no. You just put your head there. It'll depend. Soviets, Brits, maybe you want it. Americans, only they got mechanized. Otherwise, you know, you don't particularly need it. I mean, those Americans. So in that way, you just put your head there with the Ostrom. Another key element, sort of, you know, making the most out of the Ostrom is to play them to the extent aggressively. Not senselessly aggressively, but you want to push territory. You want to grab. And you generally want a few numbers of them. So that way, you know, expand on the fact that they are cheap and you're sort of reasonably, you know, that way fast out on the field, all you're just getting like one or two or three of them, I mean, yeah, not quite, well, three is kind of decent, but preferably, you know, have four of them maybe, three or four, I mean, if you're just getting two, you're just never really sort of going to get the full effect out of them, but very importantly, I mean, in most cases, you don't want to get bogged down in serious fighting with them, you want to be constantly moving about, you want to grab territory, you want to keep your opponent guessing, maybe occasionally sort of try to find engagement, even then, if you want to find engagement, it should be very much, you know, uh, to your advantage, you know, in case you should be fighting with the Ostrom, should uh, be fought if you're not fighting this, you know, one to two advantage. If you're always fighting that, like, you're, that's because you're forced into it, in which case, you still be having Ostrom doing work elsewhere. So that's sort of one of the key elements that's using the Ostrom, just trying to find as many favorable engagements, just keep pushing territory and using the larger numbers of the Ostrom to push across the map more aggressively. As you might be noticing here, I'm hitting the fuel, which of course is a very important thing. Now, at the same time, Heading as much territory elsewhere, using the machine guns just keep supporting them, pushing it aggressively. So right here, for example, two to one. Bravo squad pushed away. Here I was grabbing the fuel, so I was finding onwards, or as we just kept moving. In fact, here we've got just continued pressure. It's also a pretty good tip on how to play the conscripts, by the way. I mean, in fact, playing Ostor and playing conscripts, a lot of the same rules apply to an extent there. Though of course you don't need cover specifically to get the most out of the uh, conscript. But you know, a lot of sort of the basics there can also apply to playing with conscripts to be honest but you sort of aim to sort of throttle them up there playing aggressively supporting with machine guns and if necessary a mortar and i just you know take up rapidly and then go for some light vehicles sort of tie the whole thing together sort of nicely like you know a nice rug might tie together a room so once again so see again much more map control my opponent is much more on the defensive as a push it my ostrom and again i sort of keep looking for engagements that are favorable to me and if they're not favorable to me, I'll just sort of fall back and sort of switch attention elsewhere, sort of try to get back with larger numbers so the fight is favorable. You also keep looking for weaker targets to hit. So again, playing with Ostrom is to an extent like playing with the Soviet, except you've got an MD-42 and Panzer gonna just to back them up later. And of course, unlike the conscripts, the Ostrom tend to get a lot worse later in the game. So those are some of the uh, things there. But if you can sort of, you know, keep those things in mind while utilizing the Ostrom, you can find yourself doing a lot of damage and keeping your opponent sort of very much sort of contained and locked down. Obviously, later down in the game, you want Pantagonese, you want better infantry than the Ostrom, since they just sort of can't long term carry the fight and they can't support your sort of initial elements well. But in the early game, where there's sort of less likely to have to breach head on assaults, the Ostrom perform really well because you can just use the numbers to sort of extend map control aggressively and sort of also get an idea of the battlefield is in a sense you know where the lines are drawn and that way you sort of play around the lines just hit you know the weak spots keep hitting the fuel keep hit keep hitting the resources that way overall pulling off an overall advantage this is all where the two to two can be good because they can then sort of provide local support and superiority and sort of wherever those engagements might be necessary so in that regard the two to two i find is a natural companion to the Austin. Awesome. some players like flame for after obviously they're also good but it doesn't quite have the same i would say mobility as the two to two and of course, you can always go for more 2 to 2s. In some cases, you actually want to go for more 2 to 2s. So that sort of uh, also plays a role there. But as Martin knows, I mean, forced my opponent in this case to first go for a steward at the 8 9 minute mark because I'll be able to keep up pressure aggressively on the fuel. And in fact, I can uh, soon begin taking up there for medium armor at this stage because I'm just, so you know, reasonably far ahead. Also, of course, another option is to keep in mind is while you're Ostrom approaching head, you want to use your pioneers to sort of uh, secure the rear areas, the territory behind where the Ostrom are fighting with mines, S mines, Teller mines, you know. So once the Ostrom have to fall back and your opponent tries to push ahead, there's going to be nasty surprises, you know, waiting in store for them. But if you can sort of keep these, shall we say, small rules in mind while you're playing with the Ostrom, I find you'll, you know, they'll be pretty good. 
Again, you'll sort of get a lot more out of them. You'll be able to keep your opponent much more on the defensive. You'll be able to pressure it more. And you'll just, I think, generally win more. So these are sort of some extra tips. They're sort of, I think, fighting optimally in the Ostrom. And again, some of these tips can also work quite well with using conscripts because a lot of the sort of same tactics and sort of thought behind them apply to both. So if you're sort of struggling with Ostrom or conscripts, you know, here, this should hopefully make your perform overall a tad better i hope anyways so hopefully this video has been of some use to you if it has you know subscribe like share comment on it and of course if something else you'd like to be covered let me know in the video section a comment section not the video section and overall if you like what to do do consider donating or pledging on patreon links in the video description of course a big thanks to all those who do allow me to do this day after day this is imperial signing off thank you all and see you all for another exciting video down the road cheers